Hi there, I'm Rebecca Weaver and we're going to be looking at section 2.2 today, the first and second derivative rules. We're actually going to be taking those definitions that we did last time and applying our calculus to those rules. First up is the first derivative rule that applies to increasing and decreasing functions. The first derivative rule says that if f prime of a is greater than 0, which means that the slope is greater than 0, the slope is positive, or the then that means that f of x is increasing at x equal a, where the slope is increasing. If f prime of a is less than 0, meaning that the slope is negative, then f of x is decreasing at x equal a. And we have two examples of each of those happening. We have a slope that is increasing, and then we have a slope that is decreasing. For our first derivative rule, we're going to look at an example. We're going to sketch a graph of a function that has the properties described below. First up, they give us a point, f of negative 1 equals 0. So we'll draw that dot on our graph. Then they tell us that f prime of x is less than 0. So that means that the slope is negative. That means that it's decreasing for x less than negative 1. Then the slope at negative 1, or f prime of negative 1 equals 0. That means it flattens out right there. The slope is a constant at 0. And then f prime of x is greater than 0 for x greater than negative 1, meaning that the function then changes to being increasing. So the only specific point on the graph that we know is the negative 1, 0. Further, we know that to the left of this point, the graph must be decreasing. Notice the graph is decreasing. We've drawn our dot right here. The graph is decreasing to the left of negative 1. And to the right of this point, the graph is increasing, meaning that the slope is positive. Lastly, the graph must have a 0 slope at the given point, x equal negative 1. See how it kind of flattens out right there. Nice. The second derivative rule has to do with concave up and concave down. If f double prime of a is greater than 0, or the second derivative is greater than 0, then it's concave up at x equal a. If the second derivative is less than 0, then it's concave down at x equal a. And we have an example of this concave up. That's a bowl sitting on a table. This happens to be the right-hand side of the bowl. Then we have a bowl sitting upside down on a table, and that's the left side of the bowl, but it's still concave down. The next is a really nice little um, depiction of all of our different possibilities, the conditions on the derivatives. Condition 1, if the first derivative is positive and the second derivative is positive, that means the function is increasing and it's concave up. And then we have our picture of the right-hand side of the bowl. If f prime of a is positive, the slope is positive, and the second derivative is negative. That means f of x is increasing, but it's concave down. So this is a bowl sitting upside down, and we're looking at the left side of that bowl. If the slope is negative and the second derivative is positive, that means that the function is decreasing, and the function is concave up. Notice it's the left-hand side of a bowl sitting on the counter. And condition 4, if f prime of a is negative and the second derivative is negative, well, you have a decreasing function that's concave down. Notice the right-hand side of the bowl. Cool. All right, another example. Sketch the graph of a function that has the properties described. f of x is defined for x greater than 0. Okay. That means we only have this right-hand side of a graph. 0, 0, and 5, 6 are on the graph. OK, we know those two points. The slope is positive, so it's increasing for x greater than 0. And then the second derivative is less than 0. So that means it's increasing. And as long as x is less than 5, that means that it's concave down. So I have the second derivative at x equal 5 equals 0. That's a point of inflection. And then we have concave up. The second derivative is positive. So we have concave up for x greater than 5. So stating that again in words here, the only specific points that the graph must pass through are 0, 0, and 5, 6. So the only two points we have to put on the graph. 
Further, we know that to the left of 5, 6, the graph must be going concave down, and to the right of this point must be concave up. Also, the graph will only be defined in the first and fourth quadrants, since x is greater than 0. Lastly, the graph must have a positive slope everywhere that is defined. So here's our picture. Notice increasing, concave down, concave up, point of inflection. Another example we have, we're going to look at these three curves. And we're going to look at the slopes and uh, try to decide how it's changing, if it's increasing, decreasing, what it's doing. Remember, we're reading our graphs from left to right. This blue curve is increasing, then decreasing, then increasing again. The red curve is decreasing, then increasing. And then the green is just a straight line uh, that has increasing slope. Oop. So looking at those graphs for x close to 10, explain why the graph of f of x has a relative minimum at x equal 10. Well, notice we have f of x is our blue line. The red line is the derivative and the first derivative. And then the uh, green line is the second derivative. So we need to notice what's happening in whether or not the slope is positive or negative. So as I look at these graphs, notice when my function is increasing and it changes to decreasing. My first derivative is positive, then it goes negative. That means the function, the original one, was decreasing. I know that it's decreasing all the way to 10. And if you'll notice the blue function, that is what it's doing. And then I have a positive slope, so I know it's increasing again. If I look at the red line, then I notice that it is decreasing. The green line, notice, is negative there. And then as soon as it starts increasing, the green line goes into the positive realm. So here we go. At x equal 10, the first derivative has a value of 0. Therefore, the slope of f of x at x equal 10 is 0. This suggests that either a relative minimum or a relative maximum exists on the function f of x at x equal 10. To determine which it is, we'll look at the second derivative. At x equal 10, the second derivative is above the x-axis, suggesting that the second derivative is positive when x equal 10. Therefore, f of x is concave up when x equal 10. Since at x equal 10, f of x has a slope of 0 and is concave up, this means that f of x has a relative minimum at x equal 10. After a drug is taken orally, the amount of drug in the bloodstream after t hours is f of t units. The figure below shows partial graphs of the first and second derivatives of the function. Okay, so all we have here are the first derivative and the second derivative. Is the amount of drug in the bloodstream increasing at t equal 5? So let's look. Well, let's continue. Is a graph of f of t concave up or concave down at t equal 5? And when is the level of drug in the bloodstream decreasing the fastest? All right, let's look at what's going on. To determine whether the amount of drug in the bloodstream is increasing or decreasing at t equal 5, we'll need to consider the graph of the first derivative, since this tells us if the if the function is increasing or decreasing. At t equal 5, the value of the first derivative is negative 4. Therefore, the value of the first derivative is negative at t equal 5, and we know it's decreasing. To determine whether the graph of f of t is concave up or down, we need to consider the graph of the second derivative at t equal 5. Now, at t equal 5, the value of the second derivative is 0 0.5, positive. Therefore, we know it's concave up. To determine when the level of drug in the bloodstream is decreasing the fastest, we need to determine when the first derivative is the smallest. And this occurs when t is 4. All right. Very nice. If you have any questions, be sure to email me. Have a wonderful day.